if you've ever wanted to know how you can change the flow of your concrete mix without adding extra water, then this video is for you. Today I'm going to show you how to use a plasticizer to change the consistency of your concrete mix and make it flow like buttermilk. Hi, I'm Cool Hand Robin and I built a small business out of making concrete crafts. So for this video, I'm going to make a medium sized batch. Uh, we're going to make several different things. Uh, a couple of these propagation stations, these tiny little pots, and one of my favorites are these little spice jars. You can use them to store salt. I'm going to use this one for my homegrown turmeric powder. And of course, they're going to be sealed and food safe. So safety first, before you work with concrete, it's really important to protect your lungs. So you're going to need a respirator. This is a 3M respirator with a particulate filter. If you don't have one, you can get them at any hardware store, painting store, or on Amazon. It's also really important to protect your hands. So you're going to need some kind of gloves and also goggles. I will make a link down below with a list of all the things that you need. So you don't have to go search for them. I like measuring everything by volume. It just makes everything easier. The formula that we want to use for this concrete mix is three, two, one. So three parts sand, two parts cement, and one part water. Three parts sand, one, two, three. You do want to wear your dust mask when you work with cement. And that's either gray or white, type one or type two. You don't want to use grout. You don't want to use plaster. You want to use Portland cement. I'm using white Portland cement because we are going to tint it later. And then we're going to use one part water. And now we're going to add our plasticizer to water. I'm using the Buddy Rhodes a water reducer 555 liquid. And we're going to add it at 1.2%. 1.2% of what you might be wondering. 1.2% of the amount of cement. So I added a thousand grams of cement and 1.2% is going to be 12 grams. Measure twice, pour once. So now we're gonna have it in a smaller cup and I'm gonna do 12. The problem you will run into if you add too much plasticizer is that it's going to cause the cement and the sand to separate. I'm feeling the sunshine, I'm feeling a little yellow, so I'm going to use a yellow pigment to tint my concrete. And let me know if you want to learn how to make colored concrete. That might be my next video. Now I'm going to add my water with plasticizer to the pigment. And we're going to give it a good mix. Look at that flow. Now the formula I gave you is a starting point. You can always adjust it by uh, adding a little bit more water. Tiny little amounts. I'm going to add half of this. It's very difficult to pour from this big bucket into small little crevices. So I like to consolidate everything into these little silicone cups to make precise pouring a little bit easier. Look at that. Makes the pouring a lot more precise. I like using a plasticizer, especially when working with small forms, because it makes it really easy to get into all these little nooks and crannies. Another thing that I like about working with plasticizers is that you do not need to vibrate your concrete to get the air bubbles out. This is essentially a formula for self-leveling concrete and the bubbles will work themselves out. How fast your concrete sets is going to depend on the temperature outside. The hotter it is, the faster it's going to start thickening. I recommend letting your creation set for anywhere from 12 to 24 hours. Now 18 hours have passed. Let's unmold them. I'm going to use a little bit of sandpaper 
just to sand this down. And I always keep a bucket of water nearby to make sanding a little bit less dusty. This is one of the multiple layer pots that I made. So let's see what this looks like. Oh, very cool. That's fun. Check out the color layering on this. So this was the first color I did. Actually, this was the first one I did. Then I poured this color, uh, then this orange and yellow. Okay, here's one of the propagation stations. And this is what it looks like. I do have some air bubbles that were trapped here. And that could have been easily solved if I just gave it a few taps. But I think this gives it kind of a nice look. Looks like Swiss cheese a little bit. Here's another. This is a tray. Very cool. Now let's see how these little ones did. This one's fun. It kind of has that 1970s vintage feel to it. Groovy. So this is one of the smaller pots. These were always really difficult for me to work with before I discovered the use of uh, water reducers. And now you just pour it in and you set it. And they turn out beautifully. If you want to make concrete jewelry, working with liquefied concrete is going to make the casting process so much easier for you. So right here, you always want to look at the edge because this is the part that always gets air bubbles trapped in it. And when you work with a liquefied concrete, they just get pushed right out. As part of my workflow, I like to submerge freshly unmolded crafts in a bath of water with a splash of vinegar for about 24 hours. This also strengthens the concrete and helps to react any unreacted cement. And after they're dry, you can apply a sealant or use them right away. 